Nato with Town Square Buzz, and today we're here to talk with District 2 City Councilwoman Geraldine Kiever as she discusses her campaign for re-election. Hi, Geraldine, welcome today, and thanks for being with us. Angie, my privilege. If I were to ask you what makes Geraldine Kiever tick, what would you say? I would say I really, um, I really enjoy sitting down with folks, um, trying to come up with better ways of doing things, trying to solve problems. I like the idea of getting together as a group with a commonality of purpose, everybody bringing different you know, things to the table, but solving problems and um, creating vision, that type of thing, that collaborative spirit is what I really enjoy. Okay. You are right now one of seven on our city council. What do you feel you guys have accomplished to date? I got on city council, was elected in 2008. Most folks know that 2008 in terms of the whole economy was a challenging year. Um, so if you put in context the last three years, lay, on, lay that on top of the economy, sluggish economy, most folks realize that we slowed down in growth. That was sort of a shift for McKinney, Texas, one of the fastest growing cities in the, in the nation, certainly for years, and continues to be strong in that regard. But I would say over these last several years, in that context, we have been very intentional as a group uh, in terms of planning, in terms of laying the groundwork, in terms of looking at our infrastructure and sort of priming the pump for the next wave of growth. That's one thing that we've done. So we've okay. kind of laid that infrastructure, that framework. Um, those external audits, you know, we've had lots of external audits looking at our business practices, looking at our departments, trying to identify ways we can be better, smarter, leaner, more fit, efficient. That's one thing. Secondly, we had several issues that kind of were lingering when I came into office, um, and one of them was the the courthouse downtown. Right. Another one, and uh, not impact, but the other. Um, another issue that uh, we had to to uh, kind of unpack through the courts was the Gateway Project. Sure. I call that Stonehenge Two at right seventy five and right. one twenty one. And then we've had a shift in our leadership and our CEO uh, at the city. So we've been in the process of, um, you know, filling that position. And Jason Gray, as you know, has recently been hired right. to take on that role. So um, shift in leadership, uh, unpacking of projects that struggled through the recession, and then making some decisions on some projects or some um, some efforts that were started really before we got to council. That's. That's what I, I would say we have primarily been busy about. So um, we will address the gateway, Stonehenge 2 <laughs> issue a little later in our conversation. Sure. However, if someone said to you, I feel like council has not been active enough in getting things done. Council talks a lot, discusses a lot, but in reality, I don't see any results. How would you address that statement? Well, that's sort of similar to the question that you asked before my answer would kind of segue into that. Um, you know, again, these, um, whether you're talking about the Zucker report that, mm -hmm. or the Zucker audit, which for most folks may not know what that means, right. but um, that was just an audit that we had on our planning department. One of the big issues that we've, that we've heard for years is, you know, the city of McKinney is difficult to deal with. Um, you know, we be, need to be more effective, more efficient at bringing in economic development, new business to our community. That doesn't just happen in a vacuum. You have to create the culture. You have to create um, the, the response to inquiries that come in. So, again, we've been busy in looking at lots of ways to open the door to, for, to be more customer-focused, and to respond and we've made some significant changes and we're chiseling away at all those recommendations that are going to make us more responsive I believe um, to, to people that want to come in and do business in McKinney and then um, along those same lines this isn't perhaps ultra exciting to some people but 
We've been a city in many ways, although new census figures have proven that we're 131,000 strong. That's a pretty big place. It is. And in many ways, our governance has been kind of modeled in, uh, for a, a smaller city. And we've had pockets. We've had, we have great staff members, and we've had pockets of success. So we've had great, you know, great employees in Department A, B, C, and D, but we haven't had a lot of discussion among, let's say, between finance and capital works or between um, technology and uh, development and planning. Right. So, you know, just this whole effort of trying to build an infrastructure, build a city from a business practice standpoint that allows information to fro flow freely between departments mm -hmm. and that allows us to be more transparent, more responsive, more um, efficient in responding not just to the economic development or the business uh, sector of our, our work, but also to our citizenry. So um, in terms of vertical structures, bricks and mortar, what you see going up, um, perhaps not as robust as in recent years, but again, you have to put it in the context of a, um, a challenging economic environment, and then you have to kind of look at what we've been doing in terms of laying the groundwork. We're a third of the way built out, mm -hmm. roughly 50 some odd square miles. If you look at our ETJ and all the land we have available, we have over 115 square miles. Mm -hmm. So after Dallas, after Fort Worth, after Arlington, McKinney's in line to be the fourth largest city in the mm -hmm. metroplex. Mm -hmm. So we have our future to script. And you've been involved with the chamber, I yes. know. Um, we been working with the chamber and other business partners in the city to kind of look out over the lay of the land mm -hmm. and to think, okay, if we have this much of our future to script, how can we be more strategic? What have we learned from the past? And how can we take what we know now and keep that small town, hometown feel that we all know and love, and how can we chart our future? So again, down times allow you to kind of think more intentionally about what you want to do. They allow you to plan so that when the work comes, you can work the plan. And so those sorts of things we've been extremely, um, extremely busy about. So it sounds like what you're saying is that council has been very productive in addressing needs that the average citizen may not be aware of or see as in terms of perhaps brick and mortar, as you mentioned. However, that groundwork has definitely been uh, in the works and a necessity. Absolutely. And I think most folks understand that, um, most folks, first of all, understand what's, what's been going on. And, and in, in fact, let's be clear, we are no longer in a recession. We're in an economic recovery. So, uh, yay. That's good news. <laughs> that's, that's good. I love that. That's great news. And, you know, we're in the, uh, the LIFO, last in, first out. Um, place in McKinney, Texas. Right. We were one of the last places to feel the, the crunch and, and hopefully we'll be one of the first, first places out. out of it. But um, So all of, that's, all of that's very exciting and um, priming the pump is maybe another analogy. Okay. That's what we've been doing is priming the pump. Okay, great. If you were to win your re-election, mm -hmm. what do you feel is the greatest strength that you bring to the council table? The greatest strength I bring to the council table. I like to give you, can, can I not, do I have to focus on one? <laughs> well, okay. I have that for optimism. <laughs> if, um, if you feel that, <laughs> that's great. I'm um, just well, kidding. Okay. Um, you know, I think, I think one of my biggest strengths is to be able to identify um, the individuals or the or the skill sets that need to be around the table to um, to, to best bring in input and um, perspective in order for a decision to be made mm -hmm. you know I think I'm I think I'm really good at collaborating and working with others I find myself you know whether it's on the regional transportation council working uh, in, in groups like that, or the Dallas Regional Mobility Coalition, I landed in there in that group this year um, by council directive and uh, immediately was tagged to be the communication chair. So I just find myself in places. Other people put me in places where, you know, um, I've been able to 
play a key role in communicating, play a key role in collaborating, um, working with others to, to, to solve problems. So that would be that would be what I would say to that question. And I won't give you ten nine. Okay, but are, so that being said, are you a good listener? I like to think that I am. In fact, one um, as I've been going around and ha having an opportunity to sit, to sit down with um, citizens in recent mm -hmm. weeks, the first thing that I do is I I listen to what the citizens are saying. Okay. You don't, you know, no no reason to launch off into um, a certain direction if it's not, you know, if it's not where you're meant to go. Listening or communicating by definition is not just one way. Communication involves both. It's a two-way street. Absolutely. Hearing and responding. Okay. That's why I think email is somewhat difficult. Yes. Uh, well, that's probably a whole nother <laughs> subject, isn't it? I would prefer, much prefer two-way dialogue. Yes. Absolutely. And that concludes part one of our interview with District 2 City Councilwoman Geraldine Kieber. Please stay tuned for part two as we delve deeper into our city's issues.